everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Dramatic Soprano Tries Cooking, hosted by me, Samantha Nera, and today I will be joined by the Crafting Coloratura, so we can finish our Lord of the Rings cycle! Today, I will be cooking from an unexpected cookbook, the unofficial book of Hobbit Cookery, and I will be attempting to make... Carrot cake! There's no picture, and that makes me worried. A dramatic soprano tries cooking from the honey cookbook. Will she fail or succeed? Unlike that chord change! The first thing the directions tell us to do is put a kettle on the stove and make a cup of tea. See, I didn't make that up. I made myself chai tea. Mm, yum. I don't know if that's hobbity or not. With the rest of your hot water, you're going to soak your raisins and dried fruit, which should be one half a cup of one of your dried fruits and a fourth a cup the other. While those are soaking, you're gonna take three and a half cups of carrots and grate them and peel them and chop them into tiny bits. The directions say, while the fruit soaks, soaking, uh, take the carrots. Once you've torn down the shreds, attack them with a chopping knife a few times to mince them into smaller pieces, which I'm trying to do. If you want to save muscle, you can peel the carrots, then put them through the fine grater for with the food processor. I don't have a food processor. Food processor. <laughs> I don't have a food processor, but I have an idea. We'll see if it works. I hope it works. Because this little hobbit. Okay, little is a relative term. If you know me, I'm six foot. But I don't like to chop this much. I want to find an easier way. FYI, to make a cup of this shredded carrot stuff, takes about two big carrots. This cake better be good because this is a lot of work. This takes a long time to do. As I've been shredding these carrots, carrot shreds in my tea. <laughs> Whoops. So my advice to you, have your tea far away from your carrot shredding. I really wish I had a food processor because this is taking forever. Forever. Oh, thank God, no carrot. I'm just gonna assume that is three cups and a half of shredded carrot because I can't deal no more. I am not a patient person. I realized I should have put an apron on before I started shredding all those carrots because look what it did to my hand. My hand is orange. <laughs> all right, now it's time to cream together a cup and a fourth of butter. That's a lot of butter. Three fourths cup of sugar and four eggs. Slowly add in your carrot. Remember our dried fruit? Now it's time to drain it. According to the directions, the reason you soak it is to rehydrate the fruit a little, but also make the outside nice and sticky so that the flour can cling to it now. Floured fruit tends to stay put in the batter instead of sinking to the bottom of your cake. The Great British Bake Off taught me that too. Technically, the recipe calls for whole wheat flour. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna have to use this. And you need two cups. Then you slowly add it to your mixture. Two cups. As you can see, this has gotten quite thick. So I'm gonna change out my mixer, I think for my bread hook. I have a feeling this cake has more the consistency of a pound cake or like 
spotted dick. <laughs> Lies, I'm not gonna use my bread hook. I'm gonna use this one. I'm not sure what this one is called though. If you know, tell me in the comments. As always, it wouldn't be a dramatic soprano tries cooking unless I made a mistake. So <laughs> before you drain your fruit, the directions say you need to mix your whole wheat flour, which unfortunately I didn't have, your baking powder, salt, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, nutmeg, and cloves all together. So I'm just gonna throw them in now and hope for the best. Three teaspoons of baking powder, just so you know, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, a fourth of allspice, and a fourth of nutmeg, and just a pinch of cloves. But if you've seen my show before, you know I'm just gonna let the spirit take me where it will and dump in what I want. Except for the baking powder. I will follow that. Preheat the oven to 350. Depending on what you're cooking it in, this will take anywhere from 25 minutes to 45 minutes. Essentially cook till the top is crusty brown. <laughs> or, you know, do the toothpick thing too. While that is baking, we're gonna head over to the Crafting Coloratura, who's gonna show us how to make her Siegfried design today. Take it, Melanie. Sam, ask Rosie for a dance. I think I'll just have myself another ale. Oh, no you don't. Go on. It is out of the fiery pits of Mordor. You're supposed to stick it in the ground. It is in the ground. Outside. This was your idea. That was good. Let's get another one. According to our cookbook, this medieval inspired carrot cake is less sweet and more dense and notably spicier than most modern versions. The cream cheese based sugary frosting, familiar to most American readers, is almost unknown in the UK and poor people. If you don't like to eat your cake plain, try dusting it with a light coating of powdered sugar or following the British example of pouring a little custard on top. I'll try it your guys' way and just do a little bit of powdered sugar. Don't feel like making custard right now, but I have before when I did my spotted dick episode, which you can find here. Okay, time to try this carrot cake. I'll admit, just like my sweet potato bread the other week, didn't come out in a perfect slice, but I think that's because I didn't wait for it to cool long enough. All right, let's see how this carrot cake tastes with no frosting on it. <laughs> this is good. I have never made carrot cake from scratch before. It's dense, it's chewy. It's not as sweet as our American version. You know, the book did warn me. It is really good, but I think I'm gonna add some cream cheese frosting anyway. I know, sacrilege for little hobbits. If you like my necklace, or if you love that cross stitch Melanie just did, make sure to go check out her Etsy, The Crafting Coloratura. I will put her Etsy site in the description below, so go check it out. Remember, if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. Carrot cake's popularity is directly related to the availability of cheap sugar. Sugar and honey were incredibly expensive during the Middle Ages, so sweet root vegetables like carrots and beets made their way into all sorts of desserts. By the time of Tolkien's Victorian childhood, sugar was cheap and readily available in both the country and the city. 
However, he wrote The Lord of the Rings against the backdrop of World War II. Rationing was in effect, and sugar was once more rare and precious, meaning carrot cake was once again one of the few treats people could realistically afford. Pretty cool facts, huh?